Hello everybody. Doing a request video for Chad Spearman. Well I say, I say, ah, uh, hello there. He recently did, did a sort of show and tell of his knife collection. And I asked him um, what would be his top five if he had to get rid of all of them except for just five knives. He didn't know whether I was thinking what's his top five collector pieces or what would be his top five user knives should the um, hypothetical shit hit the metaphorical fan. So he did his top five SHTF knives and then he asked me what were mine. Now I've done similar videos to this before um, but I like watching these sort of videos and they're nice videos to make so here are my top five SHTF knives. Right so before we get into the knives um, I think one thing I just want to clarify uh, it's a hypothetical selection should the shit hit the fan. Now personally I don't really buy into this end of the world um, scenario as being uh, realistic. But for the sake of this video let's assume that something has happened the zombie apocalypse, nuclear war, um, some sort of asteroid strike and you are dealing with a complete breakdown of society. First choice of the five is the Mora Clipper which you may be thinking well that's fucking boring no fun there but what I liked about Chad's selection was they were all very practical and from a practical point of view this is a very good knife for using it's easy to keep clean I and mean, this is carbon steel version but nonetheless it's easy to keep clean the plastic sheath easy to sharpen this one is razor sharp I've got a nice lanyard we've got a rubber grip but the best thing for these this hypothetical scenario is that should a situation arise where you have to accept losing the knife perhaps somebody wants to take it off you or you're forced to trade a knife for something else then it's not a bad one to have to surrender because it didn't cost you much money in the first place so that's number one they're very useful but easy to accept the loss of more a clipper now following the practical theme um, I think it's important to have um, a multifunction pocket knife and here's one that I haven't yet done a review on uh, this is my Wenger I can't remember the model now, is it S557? But the reason I'm picking this is because like a good Swiss Army knife we've got um, tweezers and toothpick um, might not seem much but for minor medical problems insect bites um, thorns, splinters, things like that. Little tweezers are going to be useful. Similarly a toothpick. For picking your teeth or having a poke at anything really and if the toothpick's not robust enough you can have a poke about with the supposed all. <laughs> but then moving up from that as I say I think it's going to be useful to have some tools available. Um, if we have got a complete breakdown of society and you find yourself with the opportunity I was going to say looting a supermarket but we'll say gathering resources 
then you don't want to be wasting your time in the kitchenware aisle looking for tin openers or bottle openers or corkscrews so you've got them on here but then you have also got things like a little pair of pliers uh, if I can find which end we need to be at somewhere in there there's a pair of scissors Um, nail file and not a massive blade but a locking blade so from a practical point of view I think a multifunction pocket knife would be a must <laughs> the next choice is simply there because it combines being absolutely bloody gorgeous with complete confidence in the quality of it it's my GI Custom Tanto, Tanto 200 01 tool steel desert ironwood burl scales razor sharp made to measure custom sheath by George to go with a knife uh, we got the logo there that is rock solid. I've done some fairly abusive testing on it and it's come through with flying colours. And if I can find a bit of paper because as you might imagine I'm not prepared properly. Um, having opened tin cans with it it's still razor sharp. So that is a lovely one. I'm not sure I've got the lighting right today. I mean the lighting on my videos is a bit ropey at the best of times. Let's see if we can if that's any better. So choice number three, Tanto 200. Simply because it's solid, it's reliable, it's well made and I love it. Next choice, I think we need something concealable. A small folding knife that you can just keep razor sharp for when you just need a little slicer. So I'm going with the Felt Niven U1. Laminated 3G. quite slim. The thing I think here is I wanted to pick something that was going to be re reasonably easy to conceal in case you need just to keep a little bit of a secret just in case. Ooh. That's a lovely blade. So that's the um, Felt Niven U1. And then the last choice, um, let's see what we can do here. Try and arrange these a bit. I'm not sure, I think we're off camera now, aren't we? Oh, pillock. Um, the last choice, one of the things as, as well that I liked about Chad's selection was he only picked one knife for its um, intimidating appearance. There's a great tendency with this particular theme of videos just to choose your five biggest scariest knives which I don't think really is the best way to equip yourself so I, the biggest knife I've got is the um, Kershaw Camp 10 which is as you might imagine a 10 inch chopper and very good for chopping wood but if you want a big knife because you may need to defend yourself it's of limited use because it's so heavy and it's so front heavy that if you don't get if you don't hit the target with your first swing you're buggered basically it's not light it's not agile so it's not in the top five similarly uh, the Magnum 8 inch Bowie this is specifically 
modelled on the original SOG fighting bowie knife. So why is that not included as my big scary looking knife? Well, it is. I like Magnum by Boca, but it is a budget brand and I'm not convinced of the quality compared to other knives. And also the handle is, the glossy leather is quite slippy. And I think in a panicky situation, it would be easy to drop the knife. Um, so I think there are better choices than that. So for my fifth choice, the knife that gets included um, for a combination of being extremely well made and having the light, the right look about it, should I need to wave it at uh, zombies, is the Book 110. Uh, sorry, bleh, the Book 119 from Ed A to Z. It looks like a defensive knife. It's well balanced. The balance point here is just behind the finger guard, if we can get it to balance. Just behind the finger guard. It's got a nice pommel, help you get a grip. Good substantial finger guard. Nice and pointy and robust. So that would be the one which can earn its living as a working knife, but also has the right look about it, should I need to wave it about to make a point. So those are my five. Mora, useful to have, not the end of the world if you lose it. Wenger, multi-tool, pocket knife, Swiss Army knife. Little felt niven in uh, laminated 3G, nice to stash away. The uh, Tanto 200, rock solid, lovely blade. And for uh, a combination of quality, ability to do some work, and also it has the right look if you need to wave it at people. Ooh. The Book 119. So, those are my five. Um, full review on that one coming up at some point, don't know when yet. Hope you found that interesting. Thanks for watching.